Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief It's justice. a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very, very <laughs> terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate. No two editions are alike, which is why I can't wait to see how today's episodes unfolds. On today's edition, Uche will be asking, what's love got to do with it? I'll leave you to imagine where she'll be going with that. Ekene hasn't had enough of xenophobia, or maybe she has. She'll be getting at the root of it and holding up the mirror to you and I. Chuka doesn't seem to be a fan of longevity in a certain context. He'll be reflecting on the life of Robert Mugabe. Seidu wonders if Nigerians are insane and deduces that at the very least we make bad guests. Find out more. But I'll be setting things in motion by addressing our deficient foundations in more ways than one. All will be revealed after this break. We repeatedly say that our youth are our future, and yet we consistently fail to plan for our future. A secure future built in apprenticeship. That's my advocacy for this week. A few years ago, I was building a house and had artisans on the site. I noticed a crooked wall, and I told the bricklayer that the wall was not straight. His response floored me. He told me that it was maybe because of where I was standing, and that if I should bend a little bit, bend my neck a little bit to the side, I will see that the wall was straight. Folks, we have a huge challenge with artisans and craftsmen. Right now, if you're building, you'll probably bring in skilled artisans from Togo, Benin, and as far as Ghana. Some even go as far as China and Turkey. So we have a problem. When the reprisal attack on so-called South African-owned businesses happened in Nigeria last week, we saw thousands of jobless young men and women who took the opportunity to loot shops and businesses especially at the Lekki Mall. And perhaps the biggest challenge faced by Nigeria today is rising youth unemployment, combined with the frightening figures of numbers of children who are out of school. And these numbers are steadily rising. To me, I, I think we're playing tag in a minefield. Nigeria needs a new direction towards a new economic and social model, which places young people at the nucleus of social economic growth. Just like nuclear fusion, the regenerative power of young people can never diminish. But there is a significant gap between the number of young people seeking work and the existing opportunities available to them. Indeed, without a source of income to meet their basic needs, young people join an accelerated pathway to poverty and crime. Clearly, not everyone can make it into the universities, but every young person deserves an opportunity at learning a skill and earning a living from it which is why we must launch a national apprenticeship scheme to provide certifiable training to our young men and women across various fields from carpentry, plumbing, electrical and mechanical works. And the list goes on. And also we need to focus attention on developing this apprenticeship program, which not only improves skills and aid job creation, it will also help to build character and other life skills. We have often talked about entrepreneurship, startups. You hear the jargon all the time. But very often, the value of apprenticeship is not as amplified. For example, the ecosystem of Imualu can be copied and improved upon. As apprenticeships help young adults achieve higher levels of qualifications and career prospects, the government should consider creating urgently a system under the leadership of perhaps the Ministry of Youth with help from finance, trade, and commerce to encourage companies and industries to take up apprentices. As it not only benefits the apprentice, but also the businesses Indeed, in the long run, it provides a pool of skilled workforce for the companies and for the economy at large. Now, a national apprenticeship system, uh, there's a similar one that's obtainable in India and indeed even in the UK. It should be a one-year program where companies are encouraged to sign up to train qualified young people with practical knowledge and skills required in their field of work, 
under well-developed training modules, leading to some kind of certification. Now, this is different, slightly different from the ITF, Industrial Training Fund um, uh, CWES program, which essentially focused on polytechnics and universities. The truth is that the vast majority of young people today are not within that catchment area. They're not in universities, they're not in polytechnics. So like in India and the UK, we need to find a program. And also in India and in the UK, apprentices are paid a small stipend, 50% of which may be reimbursable to the employer by the government at the end of the day. And the pool of apprentices is dwindling. And I'll share this story. A friend said to me recently how her carpenter at Taylor at different times complained that they've, been, they've had to spend longer time producing um, the materials because no one wants to be an apprentice anymore. The carpenter said that apprentices dropped out or didn't sign up because they preferred the quick returns from being an Okada rider and also doing Babai Jebu. So it's time to turn our teaming youth into raw materials for growth instead of seeing that demographic as a challenge. To achieve this requires new ways of thinking and that we must move from the traditional handouts we'd give to young people and focus on developing them and developing their future. <laughs> Which one is Babai Jebu? <laughs> the that's Gambit. 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 Oh, yeah. yes. 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 You know, I was, I was watching a movie um, recently, I still haven't finished, called Mokalik. I don't know if anyone has oh, watched yeah. it. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. It's Kuna fascinating Kuna because this guy, I, I like it. I yeah. love the cinematography. I love everything about where it's going. But essentially, this rich guy um, was not rich, but he's well to do. And he drops this boy off. And, you, you know, initially you're like, is this his son? And he's his son. He's dropped him off at uh, mechanics to learn the skills of being a mechanic, you know. And even one of the neighbors comes out like, did someone kidnap you? What are you doing here? But clearly the story is going somewhere. The boy is going to, I think, develop some character by being in that environment. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine all the other things. And I keep wondering sometimes, you know, you don't need to be um, children. Any, anyone's child would really benefit from being in an environment where they have to work. They have to, you know, um, it, because what comes across to me is that, um, what's the word, something in labor, dignity in labor. Dignity. Because you see those people there and you can see the old man that is passing on, they call him uh, um, Ajay something. Um, Ajay, there's a name anyway, they're, they're teasing, but he knows his stuff, he knows his stuff really well and he's able to pass it on and compare the car to the human body and he knows what he's saying, you know. So it's, it's really impressive mm. and that is the kind of thing that came to mind when you were talking yeah. about him all, you know, mm. a certain tradition of teaching people a skill and passing on to them that confidence to say, look, I know this better yeah. than they even compare themselves with people abroad who come and they are apparently more skilled than those people because they've put their heart into learning the work. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm just agreeing with what you're saying and that really this is one way we can empower the youths. Um, we used to have technical colleges, you know, that cater, you know, to the needs of artisans where they undergo trainings. You know, all of those colleges just fizzled out. I, I know Yaba College of Technology in those mm, days used okay. to, you know, do things like this. And that's what you get from the Ghanaian artisans. Mm -hmm. And most of those people have been trained. And then most importantly, what you said, the dignity of labor. It's mm -hmm. very important that, you know, it's not all of us that be engineers or doctors. Mm -hmm. You know, you can still make a living from being a carpenter, but you should learn the trade and be paid fair wage for whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with yeah. a carpenter driving to his workplace, doing his thing and going back, you know? So that's the thing we have to realize that we need to do whatever it is we're doing, we need to get properly trained and qualified and they should be able to make a living off those kind of professions. Mm -hmm. That's what would encourage professionalism in those, those fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely love your advocacy, Emeka, because um, <clears throat> We know the way the Nigerian economy is right now. Um, those of us with degrees and what have you, what, what has it done for us today? You know, absolutely nearly nothing, actually. So I think it's wonderful. I mean, yesterday I was watching the news and there was a graduate um, from actually one of the top universities, though I can't, not quite sure which one. And what is he doing? He's a trader. He's selling goods on Third Mainland Bridge because he can't get work. Most graduates are drivers and what have you. So I love the fact that you're raising this, but the only problem I have is that I have, um, I have a girl that lives with me and I wanted to train her. I wanted her to get a skill, like when she moves on from helping me take care of my child, you know, she'll have something. And, um, and I thought this apprentice uh, scheme would just be fantastic. She wants to do sewing. She wants to learn her fashion design and all of that. So I found a lady who does that and I, you know, approached her. 
only to hear that actually I have to pay this it's quite a huge amount of money you know you're thinking that you're giving them free labor they train this person this person will help them in their business but they're asking for a lot of money and not only just that they're saying you, you need to bring a, a carton of wine and a soft drink yes and soft drink and things like it's just something you just, you, yes, just for, <laughs> and I was shocked, and I, the whole thing threw me. I said, wow, I mean, so it's now big business to, <laughs> to even be an, uh, to be an apprentice. Yeah, yeah. well, the, you see, the thing is, um, some of the things uh, Mecca has mentioned, you know, directly, I've, I'm, I'm involved directly with them, like when he was talking about sewers and the polytechnics and universities, because I have people like that in my office, uh, and they come and go. Um, and then you talk about the construction industry because that's where a lot of apprenticeship is. That's, that's where you know it's failing. I know, it, I mean, you can talk about tailors and so on. And I think the truth about it is that um, craftsmanship is very difficult. Mm. It is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And we must understand that the Nigerian psyche now runs away from things that are difficult. I was going to say that. Why? And I, that's, that's where, that's a deep-seated problem. Mm, cutting um, corners, get so rich quick. it's difficult. It's going to be a very difficult thing to crack, um, especially when you're doing it away from the university yeah. ones who are forced to do it anyway because you have to go out, do your ITF, yeah. come back. So if you don't do it, you don't come back, so you do it. Mm. But what about a guy who doesn't have to come Some back? Some don't to even anything? do it, they just so, sign that they've done it. Yes, mm. that, 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 that's very sad. Mm. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that, you know, that's the problem. How do we get us I to think, work? Yeah, that's why I mentioned the, the Igbo. Mm, system immoral. because it's yeah. a form of um, it's community cap capital and I mean, I mean that's the basic foundation of, of the sharing economy mm, before yes. we the modern day IT oriented sharing economy mm -hmm. but yeah. craftsmanship <coughs> it's, it's really yeah, yeah because I was going to just buttressing what he said you mm. know the, a lot of people have complained that even when you take on Nigerian apprentices they don't have mm -hmm. the mind to do the work, and which is why they prefer to take on people from Togo, Cameroon, yeah. because they will do it for a few days and then they want to steal your customer because they think you know mm. they know better than you but they haven't follow through on the training and so they, when they then try and set up on their own, they're doing shoddy work that is not really befitting of someone who yeah. has gone through the training. So they're increasing mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> well, the solutions we speak of are within our reach. Um, next, Uche looks at the foundation of modern relationships after this break. <laughs> 